up, Felix Lair here for two months synthesizers. And I'm really excited because today we're gonna check out the differences between East Coast versus West Coast synthesis, exemplified by two very beautiful synthesizers, the Moog Grandmother for the East Coast and the Buchler Easel Command for the West Coast. So let's jump right into it. All right, here we are, starting out with the Moog Grandmother as our stand-in for the East Coast type of synthesis. But why are we talking about East versus West Coast at all? Because in the 1970s, Bob Moog was experimenting with his vision of synthesis on the East Coast of the United States, while at the same time Don Buchler was developing his own style of synthesis on the West Coast of the United States, hence the name East versus West Coast synthesis. And why do I think this is a beautiful stand-in? Not just because it's a Moog, but as you can see, the layout here, we have these boxes, and all of these boxes are actually inspired by 1970s Moog modules from the uh, modular system from the 70s. So these are the exact ideas with which uh, East Coast synthesis or subtractive synthesis, as we also call it, started. So why don't we go ahead and create a sound from scratch. I want to create something like a lead sound for melodies. So how we would start is always with an oscillator. So let's go ahead and start with this triangle oscillator number one and now we can actually add in a second oscillator in this case a saw wave and we can tune it individually i think i just want to have it detuned slightly because then we're going to have this subtle movement in the sound which i always really like because it feels, feels so organic and natural and then we can also add in the noise source, which also always helps to make synth sounds a lot warmer, more organic, more beautiful overall, is to just add in a little bit of noise. Up next, we're gonna subtract from this signal with the filter. And that's also the basic concept of subtractive synthesis, is to have the start with a complex sound like this, this is our foundation, and then only subtract from it with a filter and an envelope. So the signal is going from here to here, but as you might have seen, there's actually patch points here. This is semi-modular, so we can actually interface it with other stuff. So what I wanna do is I wanna use this high pass filter, which we have here, which we haven't used before, and take the signal from the mixer into the high pass filter before it passes our a low pass filter. So now we can first move away some bass and then move away high frequencies. So we have effectively now a band pass filter, just overall more control over the signal. And now it's going into the envelope, which we're gonna hear when we play it individual notes. The attack. We all know the basics. How long does the sound take to fully reach its full volume? And then decay is how long does it take to arrive at its sustained volume? So attack, decay, sustain. Now we are at the sustained volume, which is the volume at which the note is gonna stay once we press it. And then release is of course, how long does it take for the sound to stop when we remove or release the finger. Instantly, no release. And here we're gonna have a tail. And yeah, that's more or less the basic of subtractive synthesis. Of course, we also have modulation uh, sources. In this case, we have uh, an LFO essentially here, um, which can control cutoff amount. So let's hear it very extremely. The cutoff is modulated now. And this mod wheel is basically our amount for that, for the whole modulation section, including also the pitch modulation. So what I want is a very subtle pitch and cutoff modulation. I think we can hear the pitch the subtle. I just wanted to sound a bit 
like a vintage oscillator because old oscillators couldn't really keep in tune so I just want to have it wobble around a bit and for the filter a bit more movement. Now however this is fairly predictable movement so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take this external source this little Moog Werkstatt which is also a very lovely uh, monosynth in its own right. I'm however just going to use its built-in LFO so what I'm going to do I'm going to take the LFO signal here and I'm going to use it to control this knob, the LFO rate. And now this predictable movement, which you can hear now, this predictable boring movement, we can actually now have it be much more unpredictable because it's suddenly changing all the time. Sometimes it goes fast, sometimes it goes slowly. And now what we have is a beautiful signal that we can send through the built-in spring reverb. So this is an actual metal spring down inside of the synth, which is an analog reverb effectively, which has this super lovely character. If we remove some of the reverb and go a little bit lower, maybe even lower, we also suddenly have a beautiful, typical Moog bass, which is super fat. And this is, I think, a beautiful example of East Coast synthesis. So why don't we go ahead and uh, see it in action in a little jam and afterwards head over to the Buchler West Coast synth. Let's head over to the west coast here with this beautiful Buchler Easel Command, which is essentially the sound generating unit of the legendary 1970s Buchler Music Easel, which is the outstanding uh, typical west coast kind of standalone synth. Uh, the original also had a touch capacitive keyboard here, uh, but it's not necessary. Uh, this is also going to work completely without a keyboard sequencing itself. Um, and yeah. What the hell even is this? There's a whole bunch of stuff here that even if you're familiar with a lot of synths, uh, some of you might have never seen and can't really uh, yeah, detect uh, from the panel what it's actually doing. Uh, so, first of all, we need to know that the low pass gate, as it's called, uh, is this section here. Um, and it's basically a volume. So it's, it's basically uh, an envelope. Yeah, an amp envelope, but it's also a low pass filter if we want. Yeah, this way it's only a low pass filter. This way it's a combination of an amp and a filter. And this way it's only the volume. Yeah, so filter, combination, volume. All sounds very identical right now because it's just a, so, uh, just a, a sine wave, so it doesn't have any overtones. If I were to add some overtones, we might hear a difference. Also still subtle, but a difference. So, we start out with a sine wave. And now, what we can do is to make it more complex by adding stuff to it. For example, changing the timbre which is uh, folding the sine wave in on itself. 
which sounds like this. Or we can use this one to wave shape it into another shape. I don't know what this shape is called, never seen it anywhere else before, but the other one is a square wave and a triangle. Very basic. All right. So, but now that's just one note playing. So how we, do we get this thing to move? First thing might be to actually add an envelope. And as you can see, here are all these beautiful colorful things and they all have a meaning. Because for example, you see the sequencer section is blue. So the sequencer signal is coming out of all of the blue ports. And we can grab the signal and put it wherever we want with either these here, which are called shorting bars, or these banana cables. Actually, they are the same thing, just this one's more efficient for the very short connections. But you could, even for the same connection, use a cable. It's the same thing. So, we want an envelope for this, because I don't want to have to keep moving it. So, what we're going to do is we're going to set the amount of the envelope. And as you see here, all a lot of amounts. Yeah. Every second slider is actually not a signal itself, but just an attenuator for the incoming signal into the black ports. Because all of the black ports are actually inputs. Um, so, let's start the clock, which is the pulsar. This is basically our master clock right now. And the envelope and the sequencer are all a slave to this tempo here. So, now we can control the envelope. And as you see, the envelope is already a bit different than the East Coast style, because we don't have any release. We just have an attack, a sustain and a decay. And it just feels a bit different. Doesn't feel like your average synth kind of envelope. It's also beautiful for higher percussive kind of sounds. And it just has a very, net, I think the low pass gate paired with the this kind of envelope, it just has a very natural, beautiful percussive sound that's just a bit more subtle and more diff, it's, it's just different than the East Coast style of envelope and filter. And this is adding to the first part of the character of the uh, West Coast synthesis. Now, let's start to make this thing move with some randomness. We can actually grab completely random voltage, or not completely, it's in some kind of musical relationship, but it's effectively random. And for example, make it move this parameter, which is um, wave folding, the sine wave. It's folding it back in on itself, creating overtones, which is a beautiful way to change a sound. This one's moved in a random way, but only up until this point that I determine here with this attenuator. And as you can see, all the inputs have one of these attenuators. Yeah? So I can always control the amount. Now let's create some pitch information with the sequencer and put it in here to change the pitch. So sequencer, signal, into pitch. And now the attenuator. As you can see, this is now a higher note. This one's even higher. And as you can see here, we actually also have a lovely spring reverb. Which also has a beautiful character. Now what we could do is we could add some randomness again and make this randomness control the decay amount. So now some inputs are going to be longer and some are going to be shorter. And already you notice that we are in much more experimental territory and this whole thing is already alive in a sense due to this musical randomness. 
This already feels like an organism in a sense and I think this is what makes uh, this system or the West Coast style in, in general special. Obviously you can also do this with Eurorack um, and uh, also with the mode modular but here uh, in a very small space, there's a lot of organic uh, ideas to get an experimental kind of sound moving very organically and unpredictably. Um, yeah, in a very compact space, a lot of ideas. So, what else could we do? We still have the second oscillator here, which is our modulation oscillator. So we can, of course, use it basically as an LFO and take its signal from here and say, what do we want to do? Uh, I don't know, maybe change the tempo <laughs> now the modulation oscillator which right now is an LFO effectively is changing our tempo which is also very interesting but we can also go with this modulation oscillator into the audio range so we can basically just use it as a second oscillator and uh, we could have it play the same notes as such but then we have to choose the same amount here actually roughly and the second oscillator is always mapped to the second low pass gate so let's take the orange signal from the envelope again you can just grab it here again you can use every single uh, every signal various times and put it in here. And now we should hear another oscillator. But what I think is more interesting is if we actually have it play something different. As you notice, these pitches are unquantized, so this is already outside of the 12 tone equal temperament. And then the amount slider of this pitch signal is again something that's going to completely change the relationship between the frequencies. So, what we're going to end up with here is something super experimental and basically harmony that you have never heard before and that you're never going to hear again afterwards because. Even the combination of these signals and this amount slider here, effectively, endless. Chances are 0% that you're ever going to create the same sequence twice. And now, what we can do, we can actually take one of these cables, which is yet another category of cable. It's basically an audio cable. I think these are called tiny jacks. It's a tiny bit different uh, format than the usual uh, patch cables. Believe it or not, it's a tiny bit different size. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the signal audio from the complex oscillator and use it for frequency modulation on the other one. So now this sound is going to modulate the higher sound. And if this isn't beautiful, I don't know what is. And yeah, I could just basically sit here and listen to this for half an hour always slightly changing. All right, maybe let's create a second patch really quickly and afterwards conclude uh, what exactly, at least to my subjective feeling, is the essence of East Coast and West Coast synthesis. Let's start again here with an envelope for the complex oscillator. a bit of reverb from the spring. I think I really liked uh, 
this randomness on the decay. But this time I'm going to use the sequencer to actually control the timbre. So what I can do now is move this one basically with the sequencer. And this is a beautiful techno bass. Super driving already. And now I'm gonna take the same th sequence here into the second oscillator. And what happens now is that this one, for example, is so high that we can't even hear the note. Actually, right now, because this pitch is so high that we don't hear most of the pattern. Now we are hearing all the notes, yeah, but this way <laughs> we almost don't hear it at all. So we are basically using the sequencer for two things at once. We are using it for the timbre, which we start hearing somewhere from here in the upper half. And we are using it for the pitch of the second one, which is only really audible from this uh, area here below. And I'm wondering if this was an intentional choice, the relation between the sequencer and this slider here. I think this must have been a fairly brilliant design choice. And now I can add in a second note. Obviously it's subjective, but I think the West Coast style just lends itself and it suggests more experimental ideas. Because it's built in a way in which you're going to work outside of uh, conventional harmony very often and which you're going to explore abstract textures. And of course that's also completely perfectly possible in the Moog universe. Uh, just as this one can easily create beautiful harmonic, uh, conventionally harmonic uh, melodies. I think this design suggests experimental exploration, whereas the Moog design suggests fat bass lines, beautiful melodies and uh, arpeggios and all sorts of stuff like this. Um, and I think if that's what you're looking for, then you know where to find it. But if what you're looking for is something more abstract, something more unknown, something uh, maybe less digestible also, and this definitely, you have to be into this kind of stuff, uh, because otherwise it's not gonna be for you. But yeah, just two very different approaches. And of course, nowadays, uh, the distinction between East and West Coast, especially through the Eurorack stuff, has actually started to fade into the background. For example, recently there's been the No Coast by Make Noise, which is a No Coast synthesizer, which I hope to try out soon as well. Um, and a lot of uh, Eurorack modules and synths that have been inspired by both worlds, because just these were basically just some of the first sketches of synthesis. Uh, the West Coast idea and the East Coast idea. And now there's all sorts of synths combining this. But yeah, that's, I think, my final verdict on the two styles.
right, I guess that's it from my side for today. In case you have any questions, let me know in the comments. I'll try to get back to you. Apart from that, thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Peace out.